make sure to like and subscribe. Today, we're going to be reading Perimeter, Area and Volume, A Monster Book of Dimensions by David A. Adler and illustrated by Edward Miller. Let's get into it. Have you ever been to a 3D movie? 3D movies look real. If there's a monster walking on the screen, it might seem as if he was walking towards you. As the monster on the screen gets bigger and bigger, it seems as if he's coming closer and closer. Such movies are called 3D because they seem to have three dimensions. They seem to have length, width, and depth. The three dimensions are sometimes called by different names. We might say that something is tall, high, or long, wide, or broad, deep, or thick. Whatever words we use, all things we can hold or walk around have three dimensions. Here are the monster stars of the movie, Monsters in the Neighborhood. They're posing for a picture. Are they all the same size? Some might be the same height, but not the same size. Height is just one dimension. Each monster has three dimensions. Each monster is tall or short. Each monster is wide or narrow. Each monster is fat or thin. To know how big something really is, you need to know all three dimensions. But sometimes, you need to know just one dimension. The movie in Monsters in the Neighborhood the monsters are bothered by noisy neighbors who run across their yards and look in their windows. The monsters decide to put up fences. Before they can buy the fences, they need to know how long each side must be. They need to know the total length of the fence around each yard. Length is just one dimension. Take a look at these two yards. One is bigger than the other. How much fencing would the monsters need for each yard? To find out, add up the length of all the sides. When you add up the sides of each yard, you are finding its perimeter, the distance around. So let's look at this house. So on one side, we have 60 units. This side, we have 80 units. This side is 66 units. And this side is also 80 units. So like it says down here, we have to add 60 plus 80 plus 66 plus 80, which gives us 286. And here, this side is 40 units. This is 90 units. This is 42 units. And this is also 90 units. And 40 plus 90 plus 42 plus 90 is 262 units, meaning that this house is going to need more fencing. The distance around the circle is its circumference. To find the circumference of a circle, you first measure its radius, the length of a straight line drawn from any point on the edge to the circle to its center. Then you double its radius and multiply that by pi, which is about 3.14 inches, feet, miles, centimeters, meters, and kilometers, each measure just one dimension. Look at the posters outside the movie theater. Each one has a drawing of a monster. Do the monsters in the posters look real? It's difficult to make a drawing look completely real because real things have three dimensions and a picture has two dimensions. Pictures just have length and width. Pictures and the surfaces of flat objects have two dimensions. So look at these posters. We got an eye-popping thriller in 3D. Monsters in the neighborhood. The monsters are loose. Monsters in the neighborhood in 3D. Starring Francis Stein. With paper and crayons, draw a picture of a monster. Does it look real? How big is the movie screen? If the side of each square is one foot long by one foot wide, 
The area of the square is one square foot. Count the squares. You're finding the area of the screen. But look again at the screen. It's a rectangle. It has four straight sides. Its opposite sides are the same size, and all four angles are right angles. To find the area of a rectangle, you multiply its length by its width. The length of the movie screen is 12 feet. Its width is 16 feet. Its area is 12 feet times 16 feet, meaning its area is 192 square feet. So if I wanted to, I can count all of these squares and eventually I'll get to 192, which is the area. But if I want to work faster, I can always do 12 times 16, which is 192. Area measures surface. It's a two-dimensional measure. Get a ruler or tape measure. Measure the area of this page. It's 10 inches long and 8 inches wide. To find the area of this page, multiply the length by the width. Square inches, square feet, square miles, square centimeters, square meters, and square kilometers each measure area. So we got to find the area of one of these two pages. And luckily, this friendly monster has two rulers just for us. And we can see that it's 10 inches long and 8 inches wide. So to find the area, just like the book says, we have to multiply 10 times 8. 10 times 8 is 80, meaning that the area of this page is 80 square inches. This book has three dimensions. The very top of this page to the bottom is the book's length. The left side of this page to its right side is the book's width. When you close this book and look at the pile of pages all bound together, you're looking at the book's third dimension, its depth or thickness. At the movies, you can buy a large box, a popcorn or a jumbo box. Which box is bigger? That's easy. The jumbo box is bigger. But what makes one box bigger than the other? One box is bigger than the other because it's higher, wider, or thicker. When any one of the three dimension increases, the size of the box increases. Of course, when both boxes are filled, the jumbo popcorn box has more popcorn in it than the large box. We call the amount a box holds, or the space anything with three dimension takes up, its volume. The larger the box, the greater its volume. The jumbo box is eight inches high, six inches wide, and four inches deep. To find its volume, multiply eight by six by four. The volume of the jumbo box is 192 cubic inches. The large box is six inches high, four inches wide, and three inches deep. To find its volume, multiply six by four by three. The volume of the large box is 72 cubic inches. You can compare the volume of many boxes by measuring the three dimensions of each and then multiplying. A cube has three dimensions, height, width, and depth. So we measure volume in cubic measures. A cubic inch is a cube that is one inch high, one inch wide, and one inch deep. A cubic centimeter is a cube that is one centimeter high, one centimeter wide, and one centimeter deep. Cubic inches, cubic feet, cubic centimeters, and cubic meters each measure volume. Tonight is the opening night of Monsters in the Neighborhood. The movie stars and their families have come to the premiere. It's time for pictures. The photographer tells the monsters and their families to line up. He wants short monsters in the front and tall monsters in the back. In lining up the monsters, the photographer is only interested in one dimension. He's only interested in the height of the monsters. Remember, height is how tall something is. It's starting to rain. The photographer puts away his camera. The monsters rush to get inside. But the door is not made for monsters. Some of them are too tall to get through. 
Some are too wide to get through. The door frame has two dimensions, its height and width. Now it's time to go home, but it's still raining. There are lots of raincoats in lots of sizes. The biggest monster will need the biggest raincoat. The size of each monster is determined by how tall or short, how wide or narrow, and how fat or thin the monster is. Perimeter and circumference are the distance around a one-dimensional shape. Area is the space inside a two-dimensional object. Volume is the space a three-dimensional object contains. Monsters and everything you can hold, pick up, or walk around have three dimensions. What did we learn today? We learned that to find the distance around the 2D shape, you must use the formula for perimeter, length plus length plus width plus width, or for circumference, radius times 2 times pi, which is about 3.14. To find the square units inside a 2D shape, you must use the formula for area, which is length times width. To find the cubic units inside a 3D shape, you must use the formula for volume, length times width times height. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Goodbye, mathematicians!